Welcome back guys. So I did an unboxing for you guys of the Fire Tablet TV, the fifth generation. This is the $50 tablet that Amazon has currently on their market. And I realized a lot of people were asking for one thing. So how do I root this? And better yet, how do I get the Play Store on this? So without further ado, we're gonna go through the process of rooting our tablet and getting the Google Play Store installed so that you can enjoy everything on it as much as you'd like. So the process is gonna start by doing one thing to the actual tablet itself. A, you need to make sure you have the drivers installed correctly and we'll use the tool to be able to do this. But the other thing we need to make sure is we need to make sure that ADB USB uh, debugging is turned on. So we're gonna switch over to the tablet real quick. On the tablet itself, you go down, you bring settings and you go about device options, scroll down to developer options and then make sure you turn on enable ADB. That's one thing that we need to make sure that we have it correctly set. Otherwise you will basically be off. The next thing we need to make sure is make sure that you have Android or OS or Fire OS 5.1.1 installed and you do not update beyond this point. If you do, this process will not work for you. Now, as you guys have seen here at the bottom, I already have Super Sue and the Play Store here. So we're going to go through the process today of how to root, how to get the Play Store installed and be able to use all the Google Play service goodness on our Fire tablet, uh, you know, fifth generation, seven inch tablet. Okay, so we're back on the PC. We have the actual tablet connected to the PC. I made sure that the drivers were installed. If you don't have the drivers installed, uh, we need to make sure to download again one file from Root Junkie download site. Uh, this is what I have here for you guys on the left side. Uh, go ahead and download the Amazon Fire 5th Gen SuperTool.zip, extract it, and you're gonna basically have this content on the bottom right side of your screen. And then we just need to turn on the Amazon Fire 5th Gen. If you double click on this, it's gonna open up a batch file or basically a terminal, uh, and then it's gonna to try to connect to the device. You notice it said device for me. If this doesn't come up the first time, it will prompt you on the, computer, on the device itself asking you to authorize this PC to be able to use it. Once you authorize it, you're pretty much set. And now we have nine options. Nine options will give us the ability to basically interact and do things to our tablet. Um, it does work in different options. So some options are obsolete as they are compatible with Android Fire, or Fire OS 5.0.1. Uh, so option one would be ADB and fastboot driver install plus test. So those things, if you don't have them functional, meaning your computer doesn't recognize the tablet, go through this and then be able to install them. Two, install Google Play Store. That's pretty straightforward. We're going to use ADB push using this command and then push a few applications, including Google Play services, so that we can be able to use, um, you know, obviously Google Play. And the next thing we have here is block OT update for Android. Fire, so for Fire, Amazon 5.0.1 doesn't apply to us. Four is what we would have since we have 5.1.1 on ours. Uh, most device, you know, sorry, boot device into twerp uh, from ADB using 5.0.1 or below, um, or boot into CM recovery. Those two options, unfortunately, are not compatible with our unit since we cannot use that at this point. Uh, but again, you can skip those things and just go straight to the one that says root your Amazon Fire 5th gen. And under this option, we'll see the other two options, which will give us the uh, ability to root either be it 5.0.1 or 5.1.1. Uh, last but not least, replace the Amazon launcher uh, with Nova launcher. That's something you can do. Or when you install the Play Store, you can install Nova and have it just replace it. Simple enough. Last one, remove lock screen ads. Self-explanatory. If you'd like to do that, it does work on 5.1.1. So we're going to go ahead and commence and I'll show you guys the process. It's pretty straightforward. As long as the device is recognized, we're going to go through option number two, which will say install the Play Store. Hit enter. It's going to make sure that there's the connection here. It's relaunching the ADB uh, server. It's connected. It says, please make sure you're, uh, you know, you're, you're connected correctly. Hit the space bar and it's going to go through the process of using ADB push to push four applications um, onto our Fire tablet. It doesn't require us to restart the, uh, the tablet itself. So you guys will be able to see the tablet itself is still actually running and it works pretty good. We're going to wait for it to finish. And at this point, we'll just say press any key. It restarts the ADB and it takes us back to the main uh, main command screen within, uh, you know, obviously this, uh, this uh, command prompt. The next thing we want to do is rooting it. Rooting it requires us to basically go through a couple of times of restarting the device. So what we're going to do is we'll go down to the option under seven. And at this point, we're going to be prompted with two different options. The first option will say if we want to basically root our device using Android or Fire OS 5.0.1. Uh, or below, which we don't have, we have 5.1.1. So we'll go ahead and go with option two. Uh, and this, I'm gonna go ahead and start the process for you guys here, but this is pretty much all you need. Uh, it's gonna reboot a few few times. It's gonna, first thing it's gonna do is we're gonna hit enter. It's gonna reboot the unit itself um, in fast boot mode. And fast boot mode on the Fire tablet is basically just a black screen with a little bit of text on the bottom right. Uh, so at this point, it's just telling us that we need to make sure that we have our drivers correctly installed. Everything is good, hit any key. You notice the disconnect sound. The tablet restart, it's gonna go into fast boot mode. 
It, this is safe to redo if it doesn't work for you the first time since we're using, uh, you know, rerouting the deadlet itself. And you guys saw already that I have SuperSue already installed. Uh, one of the things that it does do for us is that it does actually install SuperSue 2.46, which is what's inside this uh, database. The really, really cool thing about Root Junkies tool is it is a simple, easy, and pretty much almost safe to be able to do anything you need to do. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and hit any key. It goes through the first option and it's basically gonna reboot one more time, apply one more time. By the third reboot, the device will reboot all the way and you'll be able to basically uh, have root on your device. So you can actually definitely use any root application off the Google Play Store or side loading it uh, using the SD card. Currently, uh, it's gonna be rebooting again. You notice on the screen itself, the Fire tablet is restarting. So we recognize that the tablet got connected. You'll notice here it's remounting succeed and it's doing the different commands. And now it says press any key to continue. Now it's gonna waiting for device. The device rebooted again one more time. Uh, we're back into fast boot mode and it says it's waiting for device. And it's doing the last option. Uh, at this point, it's gonna basically just go through, finish it up, and then as soon as it reboots one more time, we're gonna have root on our device and we'll be able to go. So it says your device is rebooting and we'll finish the root process. We'll hit spacebar. Actually, we didn't really need to hit the spacebar. It's pretty much straightforward there. And at this point, it pretty much says press any key one more time, and this will be our last time for it to go. It says hit any enter to return to the main screen. We'll hit enter. The command terminal goes back to the main selection screen. Our tablet is going to be rebooting, and it's going to reboot all the way um, back to the normal lock screen. And then you can actually just go in, uh, validate that SuperSue is installed. You can update the uh, binaries, of course, if it requires so you. The actual tablet itself is just going through an optimization. Obviously, if you've ever rooted a device, always the first boot after that would definitely take a little bit longer. Um, it's almost at the end, so I'm just going to let it finish. And we'll go ahead and double check and make sure that SuperSue is working and that we have the Google Play Store and we're able to connect to it. Okay, so the tablet went ahead and booted up. We'll go ahead and unlock. We'll scroll down. We have SuperSue installed. We'll go ahead and unlock it. We're going to turn it on. Of course, no apps were configured, but definitely working SuperSue 2.46. And of course, we want to confirm. Here's the Google Play Store. It's installed. And let's go ahead and give it a second for it to boot up. And you'll be able to access it. Of course, this is the new design of the Google Play Store. You'll be able to access it and again download anything you want directly from there. Um, and it is working. You can download all the applications and then use them. Definitely a really good option. If you notice here, I already downloaded Hulu, Netflix, and you can download other applications directly from there. Very nice, very easy, very simple. And say thanks to Root Junkie for the help. So as you guys saw with the process, it's really straightforward. Root Junkie makes it really, really simple. You just need to download the actual uh, package itself. Uh, make sure the drivers are installed, turn on ADB uh, USB ADB debugging on the actual tablet itself. It's not in the normal place. You do have to go about the you know, device options and developer and then turn it on. Once you have that, authorize it and follow the steps. It's pretty simple, really. Uh, you go through it uh, and you notice some of them are compatible with an older version of the tablet itself. So if you want to use those options and you're not on 511, you can still use them. I personally was only testing the one on this one because as, as soon as I turned it on, as you guys saw the unboxing, it updated itself to 511. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can definitely go in there and block updates so you can you no longer have any issues as far as you know losing all those things that you do as some updates could potentially break whatever exploit is being used to give it root as well as being able to push applications into it using adb push uh, other than that like and subscribe as usual check the comments for the description and as far as the links for what you guys need to download um, and happy rooting again great tablet cheap really powerful as far as what you can do with it for the price and now you can definitely do even more with it um, you know, than you are normally have. I'll see you guys in the next one.